what's your most memorable Dr. J move or um, story? Uh, <laughs> Don't lie. Probably the most memorable moment story. Okay. Make it uh, short, though. Of Dr. J was probably the camp that he did in Lansing. Mm -hmm. uh, where he started all the way down at the other end of the court. See, I hadn't seen that before because I, I wasn't big then. But when I got big, <laughs> see, he was still doing it. And he started at the other end of the court, and he had all the kids stand up and clap. Uh -huh. And he went to run. <sighs> and I ain't lying, I swear to God, that man jumped. It looked like to me from about the top of the key. And he was just in the air. What, what? And then it looked like he just stopped. And the kids was. <laughs> and he said, come on. You in the air now. <laughs> That's my story. <laughs> is yours? Mine is about the same thing. But you forgot to tell him how he was walking. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Then he had the ball, and he looked around. <laughs> then... He like, he had his watch on, so he checked the time. <laughs> and then he just kept going, and then when he got to the basket, he like looked down in the rim. <laughs> like he was trying to say to himself, which way shall I dunk it? Yeah, yeah. He didn't know whether to bam it this way come up under the hoop, bam it this way. Now he's still in the air. <laughs> now he didn't know whether to spread his legs out wide. Not like Michael Jordan stick his tongue out though. <laughs> <laughs> but spread his legs out real wide and two hand dunk it. So at the end he just, he messed us up. Remember, he didn't even dunk it. He just laid it over the rim, looked over the rim and laid it over like that. Yeah. That's the doctor. You know it. Making his 11th and final NBA All-Star appearance, one of the greatest players in the history of the game, from the Philadelphia 76ers, 6 7 guard. He is known and loved around the world as the doctor, Dr. J. His sensational moves defy the laws of gravity and stretch the boundaries of the game, making him the greatest crowd pleaser and maybe even the greatest player in the history of basketball. After 15 glorious professional years in which he won every honor imaginable, the doctor decided to make his 16th season his final house call. Julius Winfield Irving II was born and raised on Long Island, just outside New York City. After starring in high school, Julius attended the University of Massachusetts, where he led the unheralded Minutemen to a pair of berths in the NIT and began to gain national recognition. In that era, the new ABA was desperate for young talent. The Virginia Squires offered 20-year-old Irving a deal that was too good to pass up. That summer, playing in New York's Rucker League, Julius Irving blossomed into Dr. J. 
Julius was acquired by the New York Nets and celebrated this homecoming to Long Island by leading them to a pair of ABA championships. Said general manager Dave DeBusher, the doctor is not only the franchise, he's the league. In 1976, the ABA was absorbed by the NBA and Julius was acquired by the Philadelphia 76ers. He would lead the Sixers to four NBA Finals. In 1983, the doctor and his teammates delivered the NBA championship to the city of brotherly love. After four more outstanding seasons, Julius decided the 1986-1987 season would be his last. Basketball fans across the nation made his farewell tour a memorable one. In his last regular season home game, Irving joined Wilt Chamberlain and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar as the only players to score 30,000 points in their careers. Julius Irving, all-star, world champion, NBA most valuable player, and a member of the all-time ABA-NBA team. Hi, I'm Julius Irving, and I'm here to help each and every one of you improve your basic basketball skills. Of course, not everyone can be a professional basketball player, but I guarantee you can become a better player than you are now. In fact, chances are you can become even better than you think you can be. You've got to want to make it happen and be prepared to put in the effort. That's up to you. But it certainly helps if you know how to do it. That's where I come in. And that's what this tape is all about. In parts of the tape, we'll be analyzing actual game footage to illustrate some of the skills we're working on. For other parts of this program, I'll be here with you in my special laboratory where we can look at some of my techniques. The beauty of the lab is that I can give you some of the very special views of the secrets I've picked up over my long career. And finally, you'll see demonstrations of various drills as I work with a group of young players in the gym. Michael. Michael. Hi, I'm Carrie. Carrie. Hi, I'm Vic. Vic, how you doing? I see some fancy dunks. No, not quite yet. I haven't totally warmed up yet. No matter how young you are, you've got to warm up first to prevent muscle pulls and other injuries. This is just a demonstration. Later on is my house call section, where I have a full workout program that we can all do together, and where you'll have a chance to practice some of the skills we'll be working on. You can also invite your family and friends to join us. We'll have music and all. But this is just to give you a quick idea of the type of exercise that prepare your muscles for some serious hoops. Aerobics improves your stamina. That makes your heart work harder and also strengthens the muscles you use for jumping. You might want to try riding your bikes, rowing, swimming, or even walking fast. Nothing beats sit-ups. Always keep your knees bent to minimize the strain on your back. See if you can work your way up to 100 a day. Another goal should be 50 push-ups. Before you know it, you'll lose some excess weight and feel great. By the way, you might never have thought of it this way, but the single most important thing in basketball is superior conditioning. You've got to be in better shape than the guy who's guarding you. One-on-one -on -one takes more energy than five-on-five. -five. And if you're all worn out, it doesn't even matter what kind of skills you've got because you're not going to win. Here's another of my secrets. I never eat within three hours of a game. That way, my body can fully digest whatever I've eaten. And as for drugs, alcohol, and cigarettes, the answer in a word is no. They are counterproductive to your health, your training, and they destroy your ability to perform at your best on or off the court. Play it clean. Don't foul out. Enough said on that score. Now for some of those uh, fancy moves I promised you guys.
don't believe in yourself, if you don't set goals and strive for them, you'll never make it happen. Now here's what I want you to do. Set up a little notebook, at the top of the first page, write down your name, today's date, your height, and your weight. Go out to the court and test yourself in a number of areas. How high can you jump? Write down the result. Now next to it, keep charting your progress as you build your muscles and learn my special techniques. Soon you'll see your results go up and up. How far can you jump? Mark it down, and next to it, we'll also monitor your improvements in distance. Take 10 foul shots and see how many you make. Your goal should be perfection from the free throw line, 10 for 10. Among other things, nobody's trying to block your shot. I'm sure you've got the idea. Now do this for jump shots, layups from the right side, layups from the left side, reverse layups, and so on. Also, basketball requires that you be in top shape. Keep daily tabs on your training, your sit-ups and push-ups, your stretching, and your aerobics. Okay, when do we start hearing your secrets? Well, I already gave you the first one, and I know what you mean. But the next thing we're going to learn is the position of readiness. Take a comfortable stance with your feet spread apart, shoulder distance or better. Keep your head up and your butt down. Your knees bent, heels off the ground, and your hands away from your sides with your palms up. Your back is more straight than bent, but not absolutely straight, and your eyes are on some sort of target. Now this is not a natural position, obviously, so you have to spend a lot of time learning to be comfortable in this position. But trust me on this one, it'll pay off. All right. From this position of readiness, you're ready to shoot, pass, receive a pass, play defense, drive, jump, rebound, dive for a loose ball, even go back to the bench if the coach pulls you out. Now let's take this a step further and work on some pivoting. The pivot always begins with, Carrie, what would you guess? The position of readiness? Right. From the position of readiness, you can reverse pivot. That's a 180 degree turn backwards, like so. I hope you're all following along at home. Remember, you'll have a chance to practice this with me in the house call section at the end of this program. Now, in case you're wondering why I'm putting you through all this right now, let's take a quick look at how the position of readiness affects playing defense. Basically, it is the defense. You want to position yourself between your man and the basket and shadow him all the way with quick, short strides. It takes a lot of energy and perhaps more than skill Defense is a matter of desire. Now then, here's a good way to improve your reflexes. Line up opposite a friend and try to mirror their movements. Start slowly and increase your speed as you go along, like Brad and I are doing. A little slow. Stay with me. <laughs> okay. All right. Now that we've learned how to move properly on the ground, let's try to do something about our game in the air. Jumping rope is a good way to build up the spring in your legs. Toe raises are another great exercise, but that's only half the battle. The other part is timing, and that comes with proper technique. Here's an important drill that will help you achieve your goal. Aim your eyesight at a fixed target on the wall or ceiling. Extend your arm and jump with your arm up. Try to land in the same spot and back in the position of readiness.
As you can see, Brad came back close to the same spot, but he really didn't get back into the position of readiness. Keep this up, and very quickly, you'll notice the difference in your ability to block shots and grab rebounds. The keys to rebounding are, number one, establishing position. Number two, jumping ability, which you're already improving. And number three, desire, which is part of the mental game. If you're out of position, then every rebound you get is because of an extraordinary play, not a sound fundamental play. Most rebounds, even in the pros, believe it or not, are taken below the rim, which means you don't have to jump through the roof. Now let's move on. Let's say you've taken a rebound, stolen a pass. Place a value on the ball. Consider it your reward for playing the type of good defense that wins ball games. Or think of it as a way of punishing the opponent by making him play the tough defense now against you. Okay, you've got the ball. What are you going to do with it to get it closer to the basket? Dribble? That's okay, but if you really want the ball to move up the court fast, pass it. There are lots of ways to pass the ball. Okay, there's the chest pass. Let's see the bounce pass. You use that around a defender. And then if you want to throw it far, you can use the baseball pass or the two hands over the head pass. Of course, there's the advanced fundamentals, such as the lob pass, or the give and go, or the backdoor play. There's no mystique about passing. The idea is simply to get the ball from point A to point B. Remember here, too, to start in the position of readiness. Sight your target. If he's moving, then track him. Imagine in your mind that you're making a connection. Think of your hands and his hands. Step into the motion and snap your wrist. And follow through. Just keep in mind that before you try to make passes like Isaiah Thomas, or Larry Bird, be sure that somebody can catch the ball. Otherwise, what good is the pass? In sports, we have what's known as the KISS principle. It stands for, keep it simple, stupid. The idea of the pass or the shot, which we're coming to, is not to show off, but to connect. My point is to make yourselves into results-oriented players, not effects-oriented players. Leave the special effects to the singers and the dancers. Athletes should do things for results. And believe me, if you do things well enough, you'll also have the effects. Otherwise, you're just a hot dog, and that will catch up to you. And with that in mind, let's move one step closer to the actual shooting by taking a look at the right ways to handle the ball. When you're in traffic, you want to dribble the ball as close to the ground as possible in a low dribble. When you want to cover the length of the court or run with the ball, you use the high dribble. Use the last two joints of your hand to dribble with. This will give you fingertip control. Your palm should be more spread than tight. The hand open. Use a wrist motion, bending at the elbow. On the high dribble, use more of the arm. The ball should never be more than one foot away from the body as you dribble it straight up and down. Remember those push-ups we showed you before? They'll do wonders for your wrists, and that will help you control the ball better. Wrist curls are another good exercise for better dribbling. And a simple but great trick is to squeeze a small rubber ball. This will strengthen your wrists. Keep one in your pocket. Squeeze while you read or watch TV. But the greatest form of practice is simply the art of dribbling. And the most important thing when you're practicing is not to look at the ball. That way you can see what's happening on the court and use it to your best advantage. A good way to practice is to dribble with your eyes closed. Dribble side to side, forward and back, all with your eyes closed. By doing this, you train yourself to just feel where the ball is. That's the real secret of making things happen from the dribble. Now, there's one particular dribbling move that I want to talk to you about, dribbling through your legs. You use this when you want to protect the ball from a defender who's poking his hands in to try and get it. The secret lies not in moving your hands with the ball. The secret is to move your feet, either by stepping over the ball this way or by turning at an angle and hopping over it like this. In any event, it's not as difficult as it looks. And I still consider it more of a fundamental move 
and not so much showing off, provided you use it when it's appropriate. And now, at long last, we come to the art of shooting the basketball. Always start with layups. Even the pros do this to warm up. You'll build your confidence, and if you're not near perfect from in close, you'll never have a decent percentage from farther out. Be sure you jump off the opposite foot from your shooting hand. So if you're right-handed, you jump off your left foot. It's really pretty natural. When you're on the court, just walk up to the basket and try this for yourself. Stand comfortably with the ball in your shooting hand and the same leg raised. Then jump off the opposite foot as you bank the ball into the basket. Here are a couple of special suggestions to help you increase your percentages. Keep your hand behind the ball. Flick and flop. That is, when you release, do it with a flicking type motion and follow through with your wrist flopping forward like this. The ball rolls off your fingers with backspin. That's what having touch means. The backspin softens the shot, so if you hit the rim, the ball is more likely to bounce off gently and into the basket. The last tip is to aim your shot with some arch so that it can drop into the basket from above. And you want to do this whether or not you're using the backboard. The reason arch is so important for all your shots, by the way, and not just layups, is because, believe it or not, the diameter of the rim is twice the size of a basketball. You have quite a good margin for error if your shot is falling down into the basket. As they say, never up, never in. When you practice layups, see how many consecutive times you can hit coming from the left side with your left hand and from the right side with your right hand. You need to be able to use both hands. Go for 60 seconds nonstop. Your goal here, and it's very realistic, is literally perfection. That is, no misses. Once you've got this under control, here's an added variation. Go underneath on one side and come up on the other side with the opposite hand, or with the same hand. Let's take a quick time out here and watch my teammate, Maurice Cheeks, do this. It's one of his standard moves, and you'll notice that while it's a harder shot to make, it's also a much tougher shot for a big man to defend. A real secret weapon for smaller players guarded underneath by bigger guys. Before we leave close range shooting, let's take a look at a more advanced shot. One of my own specialties, the finger roll. It helps, of course, to have big hands like I do, but the important point is that the finger roll is a bit opposite of most conventional shots. Here you have your hand under the ball rather than behind it. Your wrist is cocked, but you snap the ball upward and release. With the finger roll, you aim for the front of the rim. That's because you're snapping the ball almost straight up, and it's the forward motion of your body in the air that makes the ball move forward up over the basket and eventually in. Watch. See the hand position underneath? There's the snap upward. Notice how the movement of the body makes the ball go forward. One last secret for your close-in shots. Normally, you'll be shooting those on the move and jumping as you shoot. You might not have realized that the higher you jump, the more control you lose over your body. It's not always smart to jump as high as you can. Compromise a bit on the height of your jump in favor of control you'll make a lot more of those seemingly easy shots that you feel silly missing. All right, let's move to jump shooting. This has become the main weapon in modern basketball. Let's break the shot down. Here are the fundamentals. You want fingertip control with the fingers spread comfortably. The ball is not set in your palm. The elbow is in tight and straight. That is pointing directly up from the floor. The wrist is cocked, ready to give the same flicking and flopping motion we talked about before. Now what about your body? 
Two things here. Be sure you're squared off to the basket. That means no matter which way you've been moving before the shot, as you jump, you must get your chest and the whole front of your body facing directly towards the basket, not turn sideways. Then try to get full extension of your body. Start the shot off the balls of your feet, never flat-footed, and feel it flow up through your fingertips as they flick the ball off. Watch for all these things as we look at some great jump shots. See the fingertip control? There's the cocked wrist. Look at the tight elbow and the straight up and down arm. Of course, all these players keep their eyes firmly fixed on the basket. See the way the body is fully extended? Notice the perfectly squared off position. Nice arch on that shot. The trick is to train your arm and leg muscles in the proper motion over and over until it becomes automatic. We call that muscle memory. And that's why some players can shoot blindfolded. Each player is positioning the ball in front a bit differently. In front of the chest, over the head, or in between, wherever it feels comfortable. The next stage is to put your jumpers within the context of a game. The key is to learn how to catch the ball and shoot it in one motion. The longer you wait from the time you catch the ball, the more time the defense has to close in on you. You're in the position of readiness with your knees slightly bent as you catch the ball. You turn and you go up at the same time. Get into your jump shot and get full extension, like this. Mastering this technique will add a lot of points to your score. Once you've been shooting around for a while, you begin to develop a few favorite spots, places from where you feel you just can't miss. There's nothing wrong with that. All the good players do much of their scoring from a few special spots on the court. The key is for you to learn where your special spots are. By the way, there's one special spot that every player has to master, and it's the same spot for everyone, tall, short, fast, slow, or otherwise. That spot is the free throw line. Not a very glamorous shot to work at, but it wins more ball games than any other shot I know of. You'd be amazed at how many points of the high scorers come from those one pointers at the free throw line. As I get older and wiser about the mechanics of the game, I've decided that the less motion you have in your foul shooting, the less margin for error. Find a comfortable position with your feet slightly apart, eight to 10 inches. Use your non-shooting hand to support the ball and bring it up into the shooting position. Visually, line up the ball with the center of the basket. Cock it back and let it go. This is the push shot, the easiest and simplest foul shot. Remember that all the points we talked about for other shots apply here. Fingertip control, keep the elbow tight and straight. The wrist flicks and flops forward to give the ball backspin. The shot starts with a bend of the knees so that you can then extend all the way up through your body. Make sure you arch the ball up over the front rim. A smooth follow through is most important. In your other shots, the movement or jumping helps your follow through. But in the free throw, you plant it on the ground, so you have to pay a lot more attention to be sure of a smooth follow through. To highlight one last secret for foul shooting, think about the free throw percentage of many pros. Almost all of them should be good enough to shoot at least 85 to 90% from the line. After all, they shoot well over 50% from the floor with people hanging all over them. Yet very few hit 80% of their free throws. This is because the real secret of free throws is mental. The game and the action stops, and you have a lot of time to think about the crowd noise, your injuries, fatigue, the score, the time left, the pressure on you. It's very hard to just tell your mind to stop thinking and not worry. The trick is to figure out what to think about that will help. First, take a couple of deep breaths. That helps you relax. Then I suggest before you shoot, you imagine your shot. See yourself shooting in your mind's eye. Imagine the path of the ball as it arcs into the basket. Work on your free throws every day and chart your progress in your notebook. In fact, you should keep track of your improvement for all the types of shots we've discussed. Getting back to free throws, you should shoot at least 25 to 50 every day. We all remember those close games 
that came down to the wire and were won by a free throw. But don't forget how often the winning margin of 5, 10, or even 15 points comes from free throws made throughout the game. So now you know about working to develop all your special spots, including the free throw line. The next question is, how do you get to those spots as often as possible and as open as possible? The answer is, put on the moves. Moves in basketball are all based on making quick changes. If you go at the same speed or in the same direction for even a couple of seconds, you give the defense time to adjust and catch you, no matter how quick you are. So the real secret of moves is faking, faking left and going right, faking pass and shooting, faking a shot and driving, faking slow and going fast. Basically, there are three different parts of your body you can use in faking. You can fake with your hands and the ball, you can fake with your eyes and your head. For instance, you see this a lot on a fast break when the lead man looks to one side and draws the defense and then passes off to his teammate on the other side. Last but certainly not least, you can fake with your feet. Let me give you one little tip on foot fakes. Make sure your jab step fake is toward the opponent. Say at about a 45 degree angle, like this. The point is that the movement forward forces the defender to react. He has to fall back or take a step to the side or somehow adjust his position. That is what will give you the operating room that you want. Perhaps shoot or drive to the other side, either one. If you just foot fake way out to the side, doesn't represent any kind of threat. You won't be forcing the defender to react. You always want to keep the opponent guessing and off balance. You be the initiator. Don't let the defense dictate to you. You know when you're practicing, even if you're alone, always add a fake or two to every shot or move you're working on. Now here's the real secret to every kind of fake. It's one word, believability. The defense should never know when your move is for real and when it's a fake. The defense is to believe your every move, so to speak. Now let me tell you the most common mistake players make in their moves and faking. They decide what they're going to do in advance. In basketball, you've got to go with the flow and take advantage of what happens as it's happening. So fake a lot. Make faking a habit. Believe me, it gives the defense a lot more to worry about no matter what level player you are. Basketball is the one place where it never hurts to fake it. Well, we've covered many of the fundamentals, and I can't emphasize enough how important they are. I used to spend hours practicing the fundamentals, and I'm glad I did, because even today, I fall back on my fundamentals quite frequently. But when I get tired of the tedious repetition, I start dreaming of different things I could do with the ball. You know what? I'd lay back and I'd have a dream, and I'd imagine myself doing something. The next day, I'd go out on the basketball court, and I'd do it. In particular, I'll never forget the first time I started to dunk. It was on an eight-foot rim in elementary school. And I got a few dunks down pat, and then I moved up to a nine-foot basket. I had trouble with the nine-foot basket, because even though I could get two joints on my hand above the nine-foot basket, I couldn't control the ball well enough to slam it through. But I tried over and over and over again, and each day I could feel myself getting stronger and jumping higher. And then I mastered the nine-foot basket. And then in ninth grade, made my first attempt on a 10-foot basket. Didn't work out too good, but stuck with it, stuck with it, and eventually, as a ninth grader, I was able to dunk with authority on a 10-foot basket. The feeling was just fantastic. The dunk is part of the game, but it's not the total game. It's an effective weapon that becomes a high percentage shot once you develop the shot. It leaves you feeling great, and at the same time, it could demoralize your opponent. Get loose, don't hold your breath, focus on your target and let it flow. You might never be able to dunk, but who knows? 
In 1986, look who won the NBA slam dunk contest. Spud Webb, and he's only five foot seven. Whether it's dunks or special moves, free throws or defense, you've got to set goals and then motivate yourself to reach them. It takes plenty of discipline and hard work. The house call section at the end of this tape can help you reach some of those goals. It can all pay off. Not only have I been lucky enough to earn my living doing something I love, but I've been able to express myself artistically through basketball. I hope that I've given all of you an understanding of my special love for this wonderful game. From the University of Massachusetts, number six, captain of the Philadelphia 76ers, Julius the Doctor
Let me briefly explain what this special house call section is about. What I've done is assembled a bunch of things we can do together. First, we start off with some warm-up exercises. Then we move on to other kinds of calisthenics, for flexibility, for aerobic conditioning, for strength. Then the other part of the house call works on various basketball moves or movements. For instance, you'll have a chance to play defense on me as I try to fake you out. There are also a couple of special exercises to develop your reflexes and peripheral vision. Everything in this house call section is designed so that you can work out right along with us as you watch your TV screen. You can work through the full house call with us every day as part of your practice routine, or you can pick a few points to concentrate on and repeat them several times each day. Whichever way you go, if you use my special house call for daily practice, I guarantee you'll be playing better basketball sooner than you think. Now here's a quick warm-up routine. Okay, gang, let's run in place. Left, right, left, right, get the feet right. Left, right, left, right. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, two, one, one, one. Okay, hands spread apart. To the right first, eight count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four, three, four, five, six, seven. Stop. Right arm up and over to your left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Go down, left leg forward. All right, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, one, one, and stop. Now we'll do some additional exercises, starting with sit-ups. push-ups for upper body strength. Jumping rope improves your stamina, coordination, and it's fun.
wrist curls are another good exercise. For conditioning and increased agility, try jumping over a low object like this. Now let's work on basketball movements. Okay, let's get your feet really moving. You should be in the position of readiness. Then I'll signal like this, or like this. This if I want you to go back. This if I want you to come towards me. I'll also throw in a couple of reverse pivots and return to original positions. Remember, when you slide, not to bring your second foot to the first and never cross your legs. Here we go, down in the position of readiness. This way, that way. All right, forward. All right, go back. Reverse pivot. And back. That way. Forward. Back. Forward. This way. Reverse pivot. And back. This way. Back. This way. Come forward. Reverse pivot, and back. This way, that way, back, that way, back. Come forward, back, this way, that way, this way, and relax. To do this next exercise, you really should use a basketball, although you could use a tennis ball or a smaller ball in a pinch. All you do is flip the ball from hand to hand like this. And keep moving your hands further apart. This is also a good exercise for your peripheral vision. And then come back in, just to get touch and the feel. Not hard. Very simply, Peripheral vision is seeing what's going on out of the corners of your eyes on your right and left as you look straight ahead. In basketball, peripheral vision helps you see what your teammates in the defense are doing. Good peripheral vision gives you a great advantage on the court, and anyone can improve their peripheral vision with practice. Just grab a tennis ball or any small ball and throw it up in front of you. Catch it like this. Now keep watching me. Don't turn your head and keep your eyes focused on my face. Keep tossing the ball up and move your hand further and further out of the side as you see me do. See how far out to the side you can go without dropping the ball. It was pretty far before I dropped it. All right, let's start with the right hand. Okay, here we go, follow me. Now we'll do the same thing with the left hand. All right. For you really sharp-eyed players, Let's try it with one ball in each hand. All right, further, further. That was pretty far before they dropped. That's about my range right there. Now, you're going to play defense as I put some fakes on you. Stand about four or five feet directly in front of your TV. This works a bit better if your TV's sitting on a table or a stand so that the picture's about shoulder level. As I fake, 
you respond by moving your feet. Remember, don't move directly sideways. Move backwards at an angle as you react to my fakes. See if you can be in the right place to stop me when I finally drive or shoot. Basketball is a game of quick reflexes, as you all know. So here's a little reflex game I designed that's fun to play as you learn to be just a bit quicker. You'll see a series of small circles flash on your TV. Each circle will be in a different place on the screen. Your job is to lightly put your index finger on the circle as soon as it appears and you hear the beep. The first series of some 20 circles don't appear quite as fast as the second series. Try each series first with your right index finger and then again with your left hand finger. Then, if you want to try alternating hands using the right hand for the first circle and the left hand for the next one, and so on. Okay, here we go. That's it. My house call is over. But I'll be here again tomorrow or whenever you need me. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar will have a special presentation. This is his last regular season appearance here, and we'd like to, for all of you to join us in expressing some appreciation for this man. things that we will remember Julius for, and I guess a lot of us remember it kind of with mixed feelings, seeing how he, he threw in so many on us. But even when he was doing, putting the nails in our coffin, we had to admire this man's athletic ability, and above and beyond all of that, the man's class, and he showed it all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Julius Irving. Dr. Julius Irving Day. I'd yeah. like to present you with this clock, which I hope you'll cherish. Thanks for being so great. flag up there, off to my left, for a very special moment in Nets history, the unveiling of a permanent banner, number 32, will forever hang 
from the top of the Meadowlands Arena, Julia Serving's jersey number 32 is now officially retired. I thank God for the opportunity to stand here representing Turquoise and my children at this time. I thank God to be able to stand here and to be healthy after 16 long, hard years of professional basketball. Welcome, the Irving family of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Long, long time ago, when I was in elementary school, I memorized a school creed. As a six-year-old, I remember, I remember being taught a creed that said, we, the students of Prospect School, believe in honesty, sincerity, and a square deal. We believe that hard work, honest sport, will give us a sound mind and a healthy body. We believe in loyalty to God, to our country, and to our school. Those words in that creed, if you can remember them or you can extract a few of them, are words that have stuck with me my whole life through and have been repeated to me many, many different times. And every time different words from that creed have been repeated to me, it's hit me in places within my body, within my heart, and within my soul that led me to know that these are words that are part of the keys to being successful in life. Having a poise, having dignity, have, being loyal to God, to your country, to your school, to your friends, to your acquaintances, and to your associates. <laughs> 